Goal, 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 goal. He stopped. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Just put the goal, man. May Allah bless you. Put the goal in the heart of the disbelievers. Takbir. He missed it. He missed it. He was going to win. He almost there. The kuffar, they took the ball from him and they hit him in his balls. I saw it. Where is the judge? Where is the witnesses? How come the camera did not zoom in in his balls? I saw it. They should give him a free kick. Can we kick the kuffar? It's time to kick them. We cannot kick them. They kick us all the time. 50 time, 60 time, 70 time, whenever one. It's time for Allah to support us. Where are you, Allah? Where are you, Allah? How in the world you allow the kuffar to make us a French fries, especially the French ones? And the American even, they have the letter M over their French fries. Is that target in Morocco? Is that done on purpose? Why the letter M over McDonald's French fries? If you think that this is not in purpose, you are mistaken. We must not believe in conspiracy. Even if French fries is working against Islam and Allah. It's time to tell you the truth that McDonald really is doing conspiracy and the French fries symbolic to Morocco game. I mean, those French people, can you believe it? As if they have a glue in their foot and the, and the, and the ball never, never left their foot. Isn't it obvious that they are using crazy glue? Otherwise, how you explain to me that the French, they have full control of the ball 24 uh, hours in 90 minutes. Brothers and sisters in Islam, we are taking your condemnance and very much, very much from everybody. We are going to give baklava. Uh, when you attend the funeral. Peace of Christ to all of you. And today we are going to talk about how Muslims involve their false religion in everything. And why? There's a reason. You know, everything have a reason. When the Muslim, they won a game, if they won a game, they make it victory for Allah, Takbir, Allahu Akbar. I mean, it's just a stupid game. The Moroccan, hardly by luck, they won against Portugal. And look at the news. Muslims celebrate victory of Ummah. Victory of what? Of Ummah, which means the Muslim nations around the world. Victory of Ummah for what? In a football game. <laughs> the victory of Ummah? Are you sure? <laughs> and you know, Africa, Arab world, celebrate Morocco win. Morocco down, Portugal become the first ever Arab Muslim, uh, Afro, Afro Muslim. Omran Khan and Twitter. Congratulations, Morocco, in their victory, Takbir in Portugal. Omran Khan is involved. He, he was wearing his T-shirt or without his T-shirt when he sent this message. Because here was he sent messages to women when he's wearing no t-shirt. Haram, haram, you know, it's haram, yes, but it was hot, it's okay. And he was playing football anyway, you guys took it wrong. <laughs> FIFA World Cup Morocco defeating Portugal is getting support from Muslims around the world. Uh, uh, Ronaldo cry his victory to all dictated his victory to all Muslims FIFA World Cup.
Morocco fans in Naples, Palestine, celebrate the victory of Morocco. The first Muslim African. Morocco make history. I mean, do you see how much desperate they are? After 60, 70 years, 80 years of this game, I don't know the history of this game, those guys, they were inter first time ever, they were able to enter to the second level. And remember, the stadium, like uh, in the game with the France, there is 50, according to Muslims, according to Qatar TV, 50,000 Muslims supporting the Moroccan team. For less than 4,000 and a half supporting the French. The Muslim in the game, they start shouting, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad betaytu Allah, trying to intimidate the French. And I found some uh, some comments actually uh, made by uh, some uh, Muslims from Morocco in Twitter, and I found them really interesting. You know, uh, where is the comment? Where is the comment? Is gone. Yeah, I just saw the comment. The comment is gone. Where is the comment? Maybe Allah he took it. Let us explain the Jews. Do you think do you think Morocco lost because of the Jews? I'm just wondering maybe. I mean, I don't know. You never know. Okay. This comment we showed you yesterday and by the way, this is a topic we spoke of yesterday. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, uh, hoping today we will have somebody who want to play football with me. So I decided to do it again, and soon I will open my Skype so we can see if we can play football. So this Mohammedan, he is a Moroccan. His name is Ali al Bukhiti, al Bukhiti, from Morocco, obviously. And by the way, he supports the Moroccan team. There is no question about that. But he was wondering, asking a question to the Mohammedan. The French president Macron. He was present yesterday. This is the day and the day of the game. In the Mondial of Qatar. And in the stadium, everybody was shouting, Muhammad, the messenger of Allah. And here I want to stop and I want to ask the Muslims, what the football game have to do with Muhammad, the messenger of Allah? <laughs> I mean, how silly, how desperate. You know, the followers of Muhammad, Rasulullah, they are desperate in everything. And they are looking for a way to release their anger. They cannot release their anger against their government because they will be jailed and they will be tortured. They will be killed. Especially in Morocco. I mean, the, the Moroccan, I don't know if you see a video, go and search right now with the king of Morocco and see how they made them bow down like rabbit. They kiss his hands, they kiss his feet. I'm not exaggerating. Actually, you know what? Let me do this. Because today I'm trying to show you what is the be what is behind this hatred and trying supposedly to, sh to make a victory. What victory? What, what kind of victory they are looking for? Uh Let us show you some pictures. Look at this. This is how life in Morocco is. Do you see the guy going down to the shoes of the king of Morocco? Look at this. Kissing his shoes, literally. And the one who don't do that, he will disappear. This is Morocco. And those are his slaves. And because they are living in very depressed society, flooded with poverty and drugs and prostitution, they are seeking 
any release, any relief from their life. The king of Morocco, who wanna hold the umbrella for him because the sun will hurt his ass? Bow down to the king of Morocco. Kiss his hand, kiss his feet, kiss his shoes, kiss his ass. Line up one after one. Get the blessing of Allah. And by the way, the king of Morocco, he claimed that he is descendant from Muhammad. And this is explained why he is very corrupt like the rest of them. So those people, they are really living a horrible life. All Islamic countries, there is no freedom. There is no life. There is no money. Even the one they have money, it's in the hand of little people only, like in Qatar. It is a life of slavery. And this is the case for all Islamic countries. Name for me one Muslim country. A Muslim, he have an honor in it. The only place Muslim they will have an honor respected as a human if they go to Europe, to France, as an example, to Portugal, as an example, to Spain, as an example, but not in a Muslim country. So they are so desperate for victory. They are back in technology. They are way back in society. They are way back uh, in a human right. They are way back in freedom, in uh, 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 in law, in the progress, in uh, development, in building, uh, e even they cannot even afford to feed their kids. So we need to find a victory. And the Islamist always, I believe they have a duty and they are always used by the Muslim kings and leaders. They always try to make themselves present uh, the Muslims. Each country of them, they are like, like Qatar, they bring Zakir Naik. And Zakir Naik, he makes a speech about being professional, like playing in the international team. This is haram, makru. But uh, Zakir Naik now is in Qatar because he received a big check. Uh, When the Moroccan team carry the flag of what is called Palestine in the game, yet their king is kissing the ass of the Jews and the Israeli. You tell me, what does that mean? I mean, how come those people, they love Palestine and look this guy he got naked because he's so excited like Mimi Hijab He could not take it. You know, he have to get naked You know, I don't know what we see in down. I mean, I don't know what happened to his nipples look like they've been sucked by mosquitoes Very hypocrite people. I mean your king is the first one who signed a peace agreement with with, with, with Israel He have a bunch of Jews in his government he have an open flight zone for Israel. Even now he is buying weapon from Israel. And you carry the, the Palestinian flag. How come nobody of you dare to open his mouth against your king? And then Algerian team they carry the flag of Palestine because now they are in competition with the Moroccan. As we know, there is a war between Morocco and Algeria. They kill each other. Literally. And they threat each other to do invasion anytime. And the only one is stopping them is France. Peace be upon her. France, the French government, they told them we will give you both a few French fries. Just go down. So 
they are in the you know they are in the bed with the Jews they are kissing the ass of Israel and then they try to make the game is about politics about religion and religion and politics and Islam is one because Islam is politics Islam is not really a religion Islam is just a gang join my party we are gang we are violent gang and they think they can intimidate you but nothing is working until now and they will be forever Muslim countries are the weakest in the world it doesn't matter how much money you have even the money you have is going to disappear very soon just wait the new, new revolution of uh, of uh, energy is going to be the hydrogen I don't know if you guys you saw the new discovery so all those countries who they are flourishing now with some money from gas and oil they will die And as long the Muslims, they made the victory about Allah. So I said to myself, how come the Muslims, when they make a victory for Allah, or by the name of Allah, how come they pray when they have victory to Allah, they bow down? I like it when they bow down, by the way. It's a great opportunity for many things to do. But as long they are bowing down to Allah when they win, why they don't do the same? When they lose, are they upset from Allah? You remember Allah only when you win. When you lose, why you don't bow down like this? And why you are bowing down there? What exactly does that mean? Imagine if the Christians, you know, before they start the... the, the uh, uh, <laughs> The game, they start reading the gospel or they bring a cross with them. Big cross, like 10 meter by 10 meter. And by the way, Muslims, where is the moon on top of your head? Oh, I forgot. We have it in our flag. So you bow down to the moon god when you win, but you don't bow down to Allah when you lose. Then we need to have a question. As this guy, the Muslim guy, he's asking question here, not my question. He said... As long Mr. Macron, he was in the stadium and he insulted Allah Messenger, as we see in the screen. He insulted Islam and Allah Messenger. Why Allah did not break him and give victory to the Moroccan team? Especially he is present there. It was a great opportunity for Allah to prove his ability and give his victory to those who follow him and worship him. So this Muslim is asking question, look like Allah is not there. I mean, this is the guy who supported the cartoon of a prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon him. And why even Qatar is welcoming the one who supported that? Imagine the prince of Qatar, he will invite Christian prince to watch the game in the stadium. And he will send security to welcome me in the airport. Isn't this the same guy who insulted your prophet and he supported the cartoon? Where Muhammad is holding his testicles and Aisha was in front of him asking him what is that and he told her don't worry this is just the speed of change for the car hmm? as long you made this is about God and your God then we need to ask you this is you who brought this to yourself where was Allah when you lose all the time? And why Allah did not make you win? I mean, imagine this God Allah, He lifted the Muslims to hike the chair, but He will not lift them, but He pushed them down to, to, to fall down from the chair. I mean, the French people, they were playing you like playing kids. You see, I don't play, I don't watch those games. I believe this, this game is a stupid game. It's not my kind of uh, fun. As long as Allah is the one who gave you victory and you are so proud, 
can't Allah finish it and give you victory? So after he make you go and climb the chair and then he push you from your ass and you fell down in your face. I mean, did you see how the French team they were playing? One of you send me a short video. I, I, I will not watch such a stupid game. Short video. The whole time the French, they are like, go, almost goal, almost goal, almost goal. I mean, every few seconds, the French almost, they are putting goal in. I mean, you are lucky you get only two to zero. It should be 20 to zero. That would be fun. That would be a lot of a French prize. So they insert their God in everything. And as long as you insert your God in everything, then we need to ask you, where is your Allah? All the time, not only in the game. I mean, this game, always the Christian, they won. You see, I'm going to go with you. I will make it the football about, about, uh, about religion now. How come the Christians always, they won? Are you saying to me that Allah did not support you the year, the, the one before and 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 the one before? Guys, come tomorrow. I'm going to keep counting. And the one before, because I cannot count like you know, like one to ten, because I, I I don't know. You know, we are Arab. We don't count. You know, like they asked the Prophet of Allah, uh, how many, you know, he said a bunch, like many, you know, how many Prophet? I, you know, many. Okay. But because Muhammad, the second he gave numbers, the numbers are screwed. If you remember Muhammad, he promised the Muslims, he, he was talking about Gog and Magog, you know? Uh, so, uh, he, he said, just to give you an example, Muhammad is very good in mathematics, by the way. And by the way, please don't call him Muhammad. We found that the Muslim, they have a new name for him. It's called Tos. Tos, Prophet Tos. We showed you yesterday, if you remember. So Muhammad he came with the story of Gog and Magog, which is full of fiction, and I love it. And I love cartoon all my life since I was a kid. I love watching cartoon. Unbelievable. But Muhammad is the best of the cartoon ever. You cannot make a cartoon of Muhammad. He is the cartoon. What are you talking about? You know, are you kidding me? So Muhammad, he told the Muslims something about Gog and Magog. I'm just trying to find the hadith about uh, uh, Gog and Magog, brother, just to give me a second. Look how many times this guy keep talking about it. And he's, uh, this guy, he have nothing to do in life except he don't even play football. Obviously, I mean, if you if you are exist in the time of Muhammad, you will not have time to play football. You will be just reading hadith. This guy, he never keep his mouth shut. He keep talking. Okay, hold on. Muhammad here, he decided to give us a mathematics. Uh, thank thanks to Allah, Muhammad was not exist now. Otherwise, the mathematics of the game in the FIFA will be messed up. So Muhammad, he says that Allah in the day of judgment, brother. Okay, brother, read with me carefully. Okay. He said, just focus with me, Muslims, focus with me. Allah would say, bring forth to who? He will say that to Adam. Bring forth Adam. And he would say, at your service, sir. Look at Adam, man. Adam, you were. I know that my grandfather was working as a waiter. I mean, I was wondering where this one uh, at your service is coming from. So Allah, He ordered Adam, hey, Adam, at your service, sir. What the heck? I'm ashamed of you, Adam. Is that how easy you bow down, man? Really? I thought Muhammad is, uh, Adam is dead, but anyway, just let the story go. At, uh, at the back and call. Oh Lord, and uh, sorry, he said, uh, at your service, sir, uh, at the back and call, oh Lord, and the good in the hand. Look, look at the statement, Very powerful. I mean, this is like a goal, you know, like, you know, you know the thing. Ask Joe Biden. Allah would say, bring forth the group of the denses, denses, the denses. You know, the Zs, you know, of the fire. Adam, he would say, who are they? The Zinzinzins of hell. It would say, it would be said, it would be said, I thought Allah is talking. I was, what he was talking. But we were Muslims. Muhammad, you, you just start saying Allah, he said. It would be said, they are out of every 1,999. Oof, 
from every 1,999.99. Okay, hold on. I'm going to stop here. The Muslim, they ask Muhammad, who, who, because here in the Athens Center now, you don't see anything. Like, who are they, those from every 1,999.99? I like it, by the way, 999. That's not a very nice number. Like like you when you do shopping in Amazon, they always they say to you, like, the price is $6.99. So, like, it's not $7. Come on. There's a there's one cent is missing. Allah is 99 too, which means there's one cent is missing. Always there is, you know, something missing. All right. So... Uh, uh, you know, the prophet, because he is uh, really, you know, very good in mathematics, uh, he said that from Gog and Magog, and this is a different hadith, just to make it more clear for you, he said that from Gog and Magog, 999 will be taken to hell, and one of you, okay? <laughs> Let us go back to the fierce hadith so we can die laughing. So 999, and he confirmed that here again. All right. And then Muhammad, he tell what will happen. The child will have a, a gray hair. Oh, okay. I'm not, I'm not going to feel bad now if I got a gray hair in my head. I'm because that's, I'm very child, you know, young, you know. Okay. And then the Muslims, they ask him, uh, uh, okay, who is the, because he did not make it clear here about uh, who are they, those, you know. The Muslims get worried, you know. Uh, like, are we the one who is going to go to hell, you know. So, Muhammad, he said to them, a glad tiding for you. Which means, don't worry. One thousand from Gog and Magog. They said to Muhammad, listen carefully. Upon that, the companion of the Holy Prophet, he's holy, remember, he's played football. And they said, Messenger of Allah, who is among us would go, would be uh, the unfortunate person who would go the, um, doomed in hell? He said, good things for you. Yeah, Juj wa Majuj would be 1,000. Of the people of hell and one person of you what you stupid Muhammad this is make 1001 you just said from them a second ago it is 999 and one of them I mean the guy he did not finish his speech it was 999 from Gog and Magog it's just here in the front of us And now when the Muslim, they ask him the question, Muhammad, he changed the number. He said, the glue tied him for you. One thousand from them and one from you. But you just said 999 from them and one. This The total now is 1001. So this is what happened to me when I was watching the game. I was wondering... What Allah did to the Muslims. I mean, almost the, the French people, they have like a thousand, uh, 999 uh, goal. And Allah was watching. Who is a Muslim would like to call me and play football with me? Uh, don't worry, if you don't want to talk about this, we can change it. But I would love to play football for you. I want to know why Allah did not give, why the Muslim they claim that if they, they involve their God in everything. In everything. You know, Muhammad, he says, before you do intercourse, you have to pray to Allah, otherwise shaitan will round himself around your penis. The first kingdom ever. Shaitan take care from their anus when they pray. Conspiracy, non-stop. Everything in this cult, false religion, is a conspiracy.
And now after they lost, they start saying, oh, the, the, the ruler of the game, whatever they call him, the judge, whatever they call him, he was siding with them. Where are you, Allah? Where are you, Allah, in everything? As long as the Muslims, they believe anything happened to them. And actually, this is their belief, by the way. According to Muslims, everything is destiny. So why are you even playing, you idiot? As long as it's a destiny. As long as it's a destiny, that means it doesn't matter how good you play. Allah, he decided that the French will win. So you will lose. So how you claim victory? It was Allah who gave them victory. Why you are even upset? Are you against the decision of Allah? Any Muslim here is against the predestiny of Allah. Because this is what you are doing. And not only that, each time those people, they lose a game, they go their riot and they start burning cars, attacking people in the street. I mean, look, they live in France. They give them even citizenship. And then they go and they want to, they want to, they want to, they attack violently every French citizen in the street. FIFA 2022, Moroccan fans go in rampage as if France celebrate victory in FIFA. Semi final 14 for uh, old, a part of a group attempting to bring down French flag dead. They attack a car, a guy driving his car with his flag. He lost control of his car and he hit the guy. Why you do that? Isn't it Allah who gave them victory anyway? Don't you Muslim believe in destiny? As an example, it's a destiny that nobody can debate me. It's a destiny that nobody can win a debate against me. It's a destiny if you call me, you leave Islam. So why are you upset? Prove me wrong. I mean, your logic is stupid, and now you are ashamed of your logic. You believe that everything is a destiny. If the kuffar have a victory, it's a destiny. If you have a victory, it's a destiny. If you debate with the Christian prince, it's a destiny. Christian prince saying that to you, it's a destiny. So even the word now I say it, it's written by the book of Allah, it's a destiny for me to say. And by the way, let me mute the mic because I feel like I want to fart. Okay, this is, was a destiny fart. Excuse me. I did not fart, by the way. I'm just joking. Destiny. You involve your God in everything, and your God became a mockery for everything and everyone. Isn't it a destiny? Who is a Muslim, who is a, a follower of the destiny belief, can join us in football game live on air? I want to play football with you. A Muslim saying to me, look, let me show you this guy. A Muslim saying to me the following in Skype. This guy, he did not even sleep. 12.25 a.m. You hate Muslims and you only will suffer. You are filled with hatred. How I can answer such Abdul? Very, very easy. According to Islam, if I have a hate ever, which is not true, according to your stupid God, Allah, he filled the Christians with hatred. In chapter 5, verse number 14, Allah, he said, I will spread hatred and enmity. I mean, those people, they are stupid. They do not know their book. Isn't it your stupid God in your stupid book? He says, Allah will spread hatred and enmity between the Christians. So even if there is somebody who is a Christian and he hates you, you cannot blame the Christian. It is Allah. I mean, do you see how stupid they are? And look, he called me Najis. You know what Najis mean? Najis mean filthy. The Muslim, they call non-Muslim Najis. Najis mean filthy in the way nothing can wash you because they are fascist and they are racist and they are like the Nazi, like Hitler. They think they are the best of mankind. Actually, the Quran says so. 
The Quran says that Muslims are the best of mankind and they have the right to bring every human being like a dog with a chain around his neck. This is a very fascist religion. Prophet of Allah, he said, you are the best of the people ever raised up to the benefit of mankind between two bracket benefit. You know, when you see the word benefit, you think maybe they are the engineers, the doctors. Maybe it is Zakir Naik, you know, because Zakir Naik, he can teach us how to speak and pronounce word correctly. Like, Christian Prince, first of all, I speak English better than you. Okay, Zakir Naik, I know you speak English better than me, but you cannot say a word correctly. And when you talk, man, you spit all over the place. Thank to Allah, you did not attend the, the game. I mean, the Moroccan team and the French team, they, the, 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 you will make the floor slippery and they will cancel the game. I mean, look at you when you talk. You cannot talk. Please, let us let me grab my umbrella. Great and Prince. First of all, when I talk, I don't spit. It's sometimes I spit in my screen. This is true. But my son, he is ready next to me and he was it. Zachary Naik, what are you talking about? What he wash it? How he can wash all this slippery saliva? Christian Prince, first of all, I don't spit saliva. So what you spit? I spit rice, I spit uh, uh, falafel, I spit, uh, you know, food, but not saliva. My saliva will always get that to me. Your saliva is always attached to you. Are you sure? I heard you in the video, you said you spit a shaitan. I can eat my saliva when I want, but when I speak, I don't eat my saliva. Okay, what about you boogers? Is it the Prophet he was scratching the boogers from the wall of the Kaaba? Is that coming from you? Be honest. Kill the Prince, you are stupid and I got you busted. In the time of Prophet Muhammad, I wasn't there. Oh, okay. What? Sorry, I, I forgot you were not born yet. But still, that will not change anything, Zakir Naik. The booger was in the wall. I mean, can you tell me how the Muslim put their boogers in the wall of the Kaaba and the Prophet, he scratched it with his nails? Kill the Prince, first of all, there is not too many boogers. It was only a few boogers. And the Muslim booger is different from the Christian booger. The, the Muslim booger is different. Like, how is that? First of all, our booger, they are not brown. They are white. Mm -hmm. And they are tasty. What the heck? This is why you see some Muslims, they put them in their mouth after they take from their nose. Zakir, are you saying to me it is delicious boogers? Exactly. Okay. Zakir, thank you for calling. Christian Prince, first of all, you are lying. I did not call you. Oh, what the heck? Okay, so uh, why are you lying to the people? I did not call you. I did not call you. I did hack your line and I get inside the computer. I'm talking to you. This is your Zakura Nayuka. I mean, if this is your scholar, who are you? And in front of us, you see, Islam teaching the Muslims exactly what fascism teach and what the Nazi teach. They are different, you know, race. They are higher race than everybody. And the Muslims, they believe they are an ummah. Ummah mean a nation. And they are the highest nation and everyone else must die. Or you surrender and they bring you like a dog with the chain around your neck. Do we have any Muslim wanna call me play football with me? The only the only one who call me and wanna play football with me is Fakira. And Fakira she is wearing short skirt. She changed her voice to be a female. Let us see if we will have some Muslims. Hello? Yeah, this is must for be Fakira, I'm sure. Hello? Hello? Why are you changing your voice? Oh. You are from Morocco? Yes. How are you, my friend, from Morocco? You lie too much, too much. Ah, you are from Morocco or from Senegal? Morocco. Okay, speak Arabic to me. Me, French, parlez français. You are French or a Moroccan? Morocco, live French. So how a Moroccan, he don't speak one Moroccan word? 
اهلا وسهلا خاصك خاصك اهلا وسهلا this is Arabic supposedly now اهلا وسهلا you know Arabic supposedly okay so you do not know Arabic correct انت تكلم البيداني شوي okay listen listen so can you uh, as long you are a Muslim and you are speaking you speak your French why you don't uh, read the Quran for me and tell me you told me I'm lying I'm lying about what Morocco football soccer soccer they are soccer you lie Oh, okay. Well, I agree they are suckers, but uh, I mean the football team. But uh, this is not the question. You see, I believe that you Muslims, you blame Allah for losing. Because isn't it you Muslims believe in destiny? So if Allah, he wanted you to win, then you will win. So the question is, why Allah decide to make you Morocco and Muslim lose and all the Muslims in the world? Football and sport. No, no Allah. People, what? emotion. Allah say people die and if somebody die people cry okay emotion emotion what the, what the heck is that I'm asking you no. if, if no, Allah no, he wrote if Allah he wrote your destiny listen carefully to the question Allah he wrote your destiny everything happened to you the bad the good anything happened to you so if you lose the game it's bad if you won it's good so it's a destiny so why Allah he made the Moroccan and the Muslims around the world leave the game in humility and the french they were winning non-stop and you know, they keep holding the, the the football did you see the game brother i mean those those uh, french people i think they are using crazy glue in their in their shoes the, the the football never left their foot where was allah why he don't take the, the football and give it to Moroccan? chris chris christian prince uh -huh. you know no football you know no football First time Morocco dominate first speak to only me. game speak, Morocco dominate. Speak, speak to me speak to me in Morocco again Morocco dominate France first time you know Fakira speak to me in Morocco again Christian Prince Fakira come on speak to me in Morocco again run motherfucker run. <laughs> 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 Okay, just you just yeah. said the MF word last time you said yeah. it to your prophet, you remember? Yeah. Your son of Muta. Coward. I made you change your voice to a girl. I made you change your voice to a female, to a Moroccan. And this is again the proof that Muslims are a bunch of liars. They have no dignity. Le Moroccan, you know, this is emotional. You know, Fakira, she is getting emotional. <laughs> <laughs> and always their tongue is filthy and low class trashy this this girl she called her a prophet the same word he just said the mf word this is what happened to them when they call me they lose their mind run fakira run i don't you know i, I will never speak to someone low like you because you are just a hooker Obviously, you don't have dignity. I mean, how in the world someone he is a Muslim, he say the F word, the M F word to his prophet. By the way, your prophet, he did that to his mother too. Look, when this Muslim, he said to me, Najis, and maybe this is Fakira too. Najis, do you know who is Najis in Islam? Is anyone is not a Muslim? The Quran says, وَإِنَّمَا الْمُشْرِكُونَ نَجِسٌ but the mother of Muhammad is a mushrikeen and his father. So his, his mother and his father both are najis. So you are not the first one to insult Muhammad and his mother. Muhammad himself, he insulted his mother. According to Muhammad, the mother, his mother, she cannot and she is not allowed to enter Mecca. For sure at that time she is already dead, but that will not change anything. Because she is Najis and Muhammad is a son of a Najis woman. The Muslim they translate the word Najis as unclean, but reality is it is a very ugly, disgusting word. It's more than just filth. Any clean you can wash yourself, but this is not about clean and just body. And you know, if I talk about cleaning, I saw that all the Moroccan team look like they have a shower before they go. 
they shave and they look clean. But their prophet, he used to take a shower with dead dogs and women blood from period. So obviously, the Muslims, they are so proud about using the French shampoo. And this guy, he just called me Fakira from Senegal. He don't speak Arabic, but he speak the language of the Kufar, the French. Do you see how much the Christians, they have influence on you? You lost even your language. You don't even speak your native language. You speak French. The prophet, before he go to play football, he used to jump in a water in the size of a jacuzzi and he take a shower with dead dogs, women of blood from period, and garbage. When they ask Muhammad why you are doing that, he says, water is always pure. Nothing can make it impure. According to science, this is true. Somebody can piss on you, according to Muhammad, and still you are pure because if you don't care, if you don't know, if you don't like to read and search, piss, most of it is water. Very little percentage of the piss is not water. You can say maybe, I don't know, I'm not, uh, you, can, you can check it out in Google. I, uh, I'm assuming maybe 97% of the pee you do is just water. So based on Muhammad's story, this is why he is taking shower with piss. Because what comes from women private part, and this is even a damaged blood, you know, and he is taking shower with dead dogs, which means already they are in the decay process. This is why they are bodies of dogs, not even one. And they throw them in this water because this water is very dirty anyway. You know, Muhammad, he lived in the desert and water is a priceless. Nobody will throw garbage in water in a place water is priceless. This is not a water for, from drinking. This is a water come from the houses when people, they wash, they do their laundry, they do whatever they do. There is a little hole behind the door. It goes to the street and then go to the lowest part of the town. And this is what they are talking about. The water gathered from all the houses in that area and Muhammad is jumping there. He's mentally ill. Uh, somebody saying here, I did not come here to, uh, to, uh, to listen to you slandering Islam. Talk about Christianity. His name is a Christian prince, not Islamic prince. You know, I wonder how come Kusha, but Tusha, he don't ask himself the same question to his prophet because you're a prophet in the first page in the Quran is slandering the Christian and the Jews. I mean, look how decent those people. I did not come here to, slant, to, to listen to slander when he prayed for Quran five times a day, slandering the Christian and the Jews. is in the chapter of Fatiha, verse number six and seven says, please Allah, don't make us the same as the Christians, the lost Christians and the cursed Jews. I mean, do you see the hypocrisy of those people? They slander you, they call you pig, they call you animal, they call you cattle in the Quran, they call you nudges, they call you filthy, they call you kafir, they call you liar, they call you hypocrite, and the second you refute them, why? Why you are standing in Islam? Why? Why? Islam is very peaceful religion. We never insulted anyone. We love everybody. Let me show you my pictures with ISIS and Al-Qaeda. And Prophet Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad even, he told us before you kill the kuffar, sharp your, sharp your knife. I mean, do you see how hypocrite they are? The Quran call you cattle. The Quran call you pig, monkey, najis, kafir, liar, hypocrite, people of hell. And then the Abdul, he is upset. I'm slandering Islam. I'm not. I'm playing football with Fakira. If you don't know who's Fakira, she is from Senegal and she is pretty.
Do we have any Abdul here? He is have a little decency even to speak about his religion. Anyone? As long you make even football about God, here we go. Your God get humiliated. Him, humili, 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 him, him, uh, humility. He got the humility. Your God is shish kebab, the French fries of the French. It will be funny now. I heard that uh, the Moroccan, they will play the, the Muslim, sorry, the, not the Moroccan. They will play with Croatia. Man. What if those Croatian they put like three to zero? What if the Moroccan lost again? That will be double humility. And now if they won, they will say takbir, Allahu Akbar. What won? You won nothing, my friend. I mean, that's it. You're out. They have nothing to be proud about, and they thought they can be proud with the football. I never heard of any Christian saying, oh, the Christian, they won. Why? In football. How that is a win for Christianity? <laughs> How that have to do with God? I mean, even this is, this is a very stupid business. This is just a business. All of this, what you see, is just about money. There's no game in the game. You will not find one Christian saying that Jesus have victory, takbir over the Moroccan. We don't do that because we are not stupid like you. What does Jesus have to do with this? We can say, thank you, Jesus. We have Jerusalem back. We can say, maybe soon, thank you, Jerusalem. Thank you, Jesus. We have the Constantinia back. We can say, thank you, Jesus, that Muslims in Morocco are leaving Islam and converting to Christianity by tens of thousands. Tunisia, Algeria, Libya, e everywhere. We can say, thank you, Jesus, for something important, but football game? Hmm? This is just a pure evil business. Nothing in this game have to do with God. Human trafficking, nakedness, drinking, everything wrong. Even if you want to watch the game, you have to pay. Can you even watch it for free? Just watch it. You cannot. It's a theft. And only fool, they will pay for it. Only foolish people, they will pay to watch such a stupid game. They are fool. I mean, there is always, there is something for the fool. They open a casino for the fool, not for the smart. This is nothing but a form of gambling. It's a form of gambling, nothing more. Even there is gambling over it too. There's millions of businesses around the world. They make betting in who will win and they make a lot of money. And those who play in the both teams, there's a billionaires behind them and they are gambling with their money. So maybe they will make a lot more money from them. So they can sell even the player himself. They, they sell the player. And can you believe it? I mean, a human being is for sale. Anyway, it was just a question in my mind. Where are you, Allah? I was looking at this poor Moroccan Muslim who believe in Allah and worship Allah non-stop. And you know, he eat always French fries, but he never thought one day that it was a trap. And the French, they put, they asked the McDonald to put the first letter of Morocco over the French fries container I mean I cannot believe that those people they did that always I look at uh, French fries I like French fries by the way but now I know what is behind the letter M on the box in the beginning I thought maybe it was saying like mayonnaise you know oh uh, you know, something like have to do with taste or something. It turned to me, it's about Morocco and about Muhammad. 
I mean, what the coincidence that both start with the letter M? Morocco, Muhammad. You know, what about Allah? Oh, okay. It's okay, we can fix that. No problem, you know. We cannot leave Allah without being there. I mean, that will not be fun. What do you want people to say about this? No way. So, we, we can fix it. It's very easy. Okay, I mean, this is a, not a big deal, my friend. Don't make a, a drama about it. Here we go. M. Okay. A. Where is the A? I'm typing in Arabic. Okay, we need to change the color. Hold on. To make it fit with His Holiness. Uh, we will make it what? Orange, orange. I just said a word in... in uh, uh, Indonesian language. You know, if you go to Indonesia, by the way, and you do not know speaking uh, Indonesian, you just go there, and just like you arrived in the airport, just tell them orange, orange, uh, you know, they will understand everything you are saying. I'm just saying, just do it, you know, just orange, orange. And just tell them, Christian Prince, send me. So, uh, orange, orange, peace be upon him. Let's change the color because it's not clear. Actually, it is orange, but I don't know, for me, it doesn't look orange in the screen. Uh, I choose orange. Something wrong with this screen here. Okay, and let us use... Uh, uh, brown black black come on black i know what happened it's not even making uh, anyway uh, you know i know what's not happening we changed the letter is still not happening let me write it down uh, uh, writing using my uh, uh, fantastic writing skills okay a mcdonald here we go or uh, a allah plus did I put a plus? The Muslim will be offended now. They will say, look, you put a cross. Unbelievable. Why I do that? I mean, don't you know that there is a Muslim watching? Those people, they get offended from anything. Hey, Muslim, do you use the plus, do you use the plus uh, sign in the mathematics? I mean, aren't you really worried that you are using the cross? Why do you do that? Those Christians, they are occupying you and everything. How you can use a plus? We should use minus, brother. Let us put your minus because plus is haram. This is the cross. This is the cross of the crusade. So from now on, we will say Allah minus Muhammad equal to zero. How, because you cannot minus any things does not exist anyway. So Allah minus, okay, let us show minus. Minus. M. Hmm. Do we have any Abdul want to call us and play football with me? Beside Fakira, peace be upon her. Huh? The only one who uh, like uh, try to call me is Fakira. She is very filthy and she is a low class. I think this is Fakira again. Let us see. Minus Fakira. Who want to bet that this is Fakira? It is Fakira. <laughs> Son of Muta. <laughs> one billion Muslim. By the way, they are not one billion because the Muslim Sunni. They are way small in number. You know, the, the funny thing about Muslims, they count every day Muslims. But most of Muslims who live in, even in, in Europe, they are not even Muslim no more. Most of them, either they become atheists or they become Christians. They don't care for Muhammad, but they count everybody as a Muslim. Uh, 
They count every Indonesian as a Muslim. They count every Egyptian as a Muslim, every uh, uh, Lebanese, every uh, Syrian, every Iraqi, every etc. But in reality, there is no Muslim left between them. And the proof is the football and the music and the dancing and the naked women on the stage invited by the Prince of Qatar and the government of Qatar. And the Prince of Qatar, he welcomed the gays too. Don't forget, the Prince of Qatar, he said the clear message, we welcome the gay community. We don't discriminate them. You know, I find the Muslims are uh, the people of hypocrisy with certificate because they are following their prophet. So you will find as an example, uh, what is name, the guy, his name in uh, who live in England, uh, I forgot, and the other day I made a video about him. Uh, uh, he defend the gays and he is a Muslim. And he danced with the gays. What about the women? She is in the Congress women in USA. What her name from Somalia, you know? She jump and she do bloody dancing with the, with the gays festival and the, the women from Palestine with her too. She's a Congress woman too. I mean, those people are, and they support the abortion. They support the gay marriage. And in the same time, they are Muslims. I mean, Muslims are really, this is what Muslims are about. Muslims are people who jump into opportunity. So when they see there's an opportunity in the football to make themselves look like heroes, they jump into it. It's a short time. All this religion is about short time. But in reality, if you go to Morocco, you will see drugs everywhere, prostitution, homeless. I mean, 50,000 people, they fly all the way to Qatar, where the money is coming from. I mean, this is a very extremely poor country. Those Moroccan people, they cross the sea, they send even their kids, they are two years old, they put an infant, is six months old, in a boat alone, send him to Europe. Suddenly they have money for the football and they made the football about God and fighting the crusade and making victory when they are losers in everything. They are losers in science. They are losers in education. They are losers in money. They are losers in security, in safety, in war, in peace, in a human right, in everything. Name for me one field Just one field. They are a winner in it. Do we have any Muslim want to call me so we can play football today? Today is football time. I am against the football and I don't play good football, so you can win against me, no, no, no problem, easy. And the first question I will ask you, where is your Allah? When you lose, ah, somebody he got me busted. I asked, find me one thing Muslims are good at. He said ter terrorism. Even that one is not good for it, you know. Because you see, if you want to be a terrorist, uh, I mean, you see, the the purpose of terrorism is to uh, accomplish uh, a target. So when Muhammad he says, "I've been victorious by terrorism," Muhammad he practiced terrorism so he can be victorious. But Putting a bomb in an airplane or a bus, that will not make you victorious. <laughs> you know, that is not, that's not what will work. That will make everybody spit at your prophet and everybody become an enemy to you more, even those who think that Islam is a nice religion. So it worked the opposite way. Muhammad is the first terrorist, and we know that there is many, even, you know, actually Western leaders, they support Islam. Name for me one Western leader, except maybe Trump. He said the truth about Islam. No, nobody. They say Islam, George Bush, Islam is peace. Obama, he's a Shia, anyway. Joe Biden. The French president. 
the Prime Minister of England, the King of uh, the now the, the King in, in in England, you know Charles. All of them they lie. Nobody want to tell you that Muhammad he said I am a terrorist and I am being victorious by terror. How Muhammad get victory? By terror, no sort of rob. Is that something written by the Christians? No. As you see, this is the Muslim translation. This is Muhammad saying, I have been helped by terror. So those Muhammadan, because, you know, those uh, European are very tolerant, I mean, imagine you live in France and you are burning the French flag. They will not dare to do that if they live in different country. But because they knew in this country, they are protected. This is the truth. They take advantage of you being nice. None of them dare to insult their kings. But their king is a slave owner. He treat them like slaves. He treat them like animals. How come they have a big mouth to insult you in France and they live in France, but they don't dare to insult their king who treat them like garbage? Because if they say one word against their king, he will make them disappear. You know, all of them, they support Palestine. When the Palestinian in Jordan, they decide to go against the king of Jordan, what the king of Jordan did? Go and search for something called the Black Friday. Go search for it in Jordan. The king of Jordan made them shish kebab. He starts shelling them by bombs. If an Israeli soldier defend himself killing one terrorist, oh, he killed them, you know. But when Saddam Hussein, he used chemical weapon to kill tens of thousands of Kurdish, not a single Muslim opened his mouth. And Erdogan now is doing the same. They are very hypocrite. They love killing each other. Their leaders are stepping on them left and right. They kill them non-stop. They use them like a snack. They are heroes in Europe because in Europe they are protected. Those European, they are very civil and they give them the right to protest and to shout and to scream and even to burn cars. Every year, the Muslims, they burn between, actually in, in one occasion, they burn more than 5,000 cars. And the French government is just watching because, yeah, citizens, they have the right to express themselves. Stupid government. Do they, do they dare to do that in Morocco? Or in Algeria? They don't. Islam is satanic and there's no question about that. And the second you follow Satan, you do what Satan does. This is why the second they lose a stupid game, they start burning everything around them. Not only that, even when they won, they burn and they do violent. Imagine the Moroccan Muslims, they won a game. I'm calling them Muslim now because what Muslim they call them, you know, they, they consider that as a Muslim victory. The Moroccan Muslim, they won a game against Portugal. What the Muslim they did in Lebanon? Hundreds of Muslims by motorcycles, they come to the Christian area territory in the east of Beirut. And they start throwing rocks and saying the effort to Jesus. Why are you going to do that? I mean, your game was with Portugal, and those are not the Portuguese. And you won the game. It's not like they lost the game. Why you are coming to the capital, the, 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 the center of one of the like, uh, most populated Christian area, insulting Jesus? Why you do that? And none of them is even Moroccan. They are Palestinian and Muslim Sunni. And then what the Christian they did in return? In, in Lebanon, they you know they gave them what uh, 
they give to somebody and welcome visitor. You know? Why you, why you did that yourself? Here we go. You went there, did it beat the hell of you? Why you do that? Why you involve and they have the flags of, uh, of uh, 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 Palestine, a flag of Morocco, and start insulting Jesus, insulting Mary, and the result is you have a, a big spank in your ass, and all of you, you went and hardly you can walk. Why you do violence? They are violent when they are weak. They are violent when they are strong. They are violent with their family. They are violent inside their house if they beat their wives. But the most important thing, those followers of Muhammad, they are violent only with the one who is nice. Do they dare to do the same in Russia? You know, Putin, he took Shishenia. He demolished the country. And now the Muslims, they are serving him. And Kadarov is serving like a puppy. And the Muslims, they worship Kadarov. But the guy is a traitor. He worked for the Kuffar. The Quran says in chapter 5, verse 51, take not Christians and Jews as the protectors. And the one who take them as a protectors, he is one of them. But have you ever heard of a Muslim upset from Kadarov? Kadarov, Allah Akbar, we are going to occupy Ukraine. He went there, they, 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 they spank him. They send him hundreds of dead of his men, the Ukrainian, they did that to him. They send him falafel back. And then Kadarov, he claimed, we lost only two. Imagine, guys, this guy he sent in one day more than 10,000 fighters. And he claimed he lost only two in this war. Just two. And by the way, they did not get injured because of Ukrainian. They got injured because of lipstick. And you will see Kadarov growing a beard and praising be Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa lahmatul. You don't speak Arabic. He's a clown. He's a traitor. He is serving the enemy of Islam. He is not only serving the enemy of Islam, he is serving the enemy of the Chechen country, which is demolished by Putin himself. The Chinese president just came just last week to Saudi Arabia. All the Muslims from around the world, they came to kiss his ass. May Allah bless your ass. Chinese president. I think the Chinese president, he have a nice ass. That explain why other than they come in from everywhere. Where is Mimi Hijab? Mimi Hijab, he took off his T-shirt to show us his sexy chest, who he chafed it a day before. I mean, the guy he have here, he have many photos of himself. He liked to show himself, you know, naked. So he have tons of photos of himself and there's a hair in his chest. The day he went to the embassy, the day before he, say, he shaved his chest. Man, what a boob. Do Mimi Hijab dare to make a video against his president in Egypt who was in the meeting with the Chinese president? Do you dare Mimi Hijab? You try to make a victory in football, even in that you lose. Even in that, you are a potato. Wave your hand to the Chinese president. I thought the Chinese are putting a lot of Muslims in jail in China. I thought you don't shake hands with the kuffar. They are nudges. This, those are not only kuffar, those are communists. They don't believe in God at all. They shower him with gifts, gold and silver. And by the way, they gave him gift and necklace made in China. 
one of the funny things about those Muhammadan that everything they are wearing, all those people around, you see, all those people there, even the Arabian clothes is made in China. Those Arabs do not know how to make a clothing. The phone they are using is made in China. The TV. The shaving machine. The table. Even, by the way, even Mac computer is made in China, in case you do not know. Once my laptop, you know, uh, some water is split in it and the keyboard like burned. So I decided to fix it, what I can do. So I took it and I, I took the screws right away to dry it before it burned, but it was too late. But then I noticed the battery is in China, the board is in China. It says made in China, everything is made in China. And they call it Apple America. And this is the Egyptian president. By the way, he was supporting Morocco, wasn't he? Did he support the Muslims in China? So those Muslims, they are so proud about supporting each other in something silly. And even if they support, it was for showtime. Like Mimi Hijab, he take off his T-shirt in the front of the Chinese embassy. I mean, that's it, China, they lost. I mean, that's it. You take off your T-shirt in the front of the Chinese embassy? Not a single Muslim left behind did not come to speak to His Highness, His Majesty, the, his, 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 the Prophet of China. Do we have any Muhammadan? He would like to play football with me. Anyone? Okay, listen. Let us, as long as you don't play football with me, because you know you you think we are you know Christians. They play the best football in the world. Okay, I'm Chinese. I'm a communist now. You want to play Chinese uh, football with me? Right? Uh, uh, okay. You see, here is a Muslim as an example. He is trying to prove to you something. Mr. Solomon, he, is, he said, look what the Christianity is based upon. Let us love together just what the Muslim they say, so we can love. He said that Paul he said in Roman that you know if my lie, my lie, look and he make, he make it in big, my lie is for the glory of God, you know. So that's mean, uh, you know, Christianity is foundation is based on lie. So you stupid son of Muta. So why your Quran says believe in what we have between our hands? Secondly, you stupid donkey, don't you see they accuse him of lying? Why you don't read the whole thing? They accuse him of lying. He said, if my lie is not for myself, the lie is to glorify God, how I can be a liar? Do you see how we get you busted? However, as long you are talking about lying and foundation of lying, your God Allah, the first thing he did when he made his chair, he wrote the name of Muhammad on his chair. So let me ask you a question. What the pen Allah he used and the paint he used to write the name of a prophet Muhammad in the chair? I will give you three options. The pen is made in China. The pen or the paint he used from Home Depot, which is from China still. Or it is Islamic pen. I mean, do you see how he's, or you know what? Islam is not based in life of, of you know, the sunset in America water. This is true. It's true. And there is a hail coming from the mountains in the sky. And not only that, brother, the Quran confirmed that uh, a male like me, he have no balls. Why? Because my sperm come from my backbone. 
I mean, I have boards, but look like they are just there for decoration. According to your prophet. And you are talking about lies and the earth is a flat and women have a sperm coming from their ribs. And the prophet, he said, a man, he can lie to his in three, to his friends, to his family, to his enemy. So who's left? And a Muslim talking about lying. By the way, do you have balls or they are decoration? The only religion teach that balls is not the pro, not the, where the sperm is coming is uh, the Quran. It's coming from your backbone, the last bone in your in your uh, uh, spine, brother. You know, and not only that, you see, Quran and Islam don't lie. As an example, Muhammad he claimed that when Allah created a human being. He hit Adam in his shoulder. Adam in his shoulder. Let, let me find you the reference. Give me a second, please. I never thought that Adam, our grandfather, he do not have penis. The guy, he do have intercourse through his shoulder. Read with me, it's not a lie, brother. This is not a lie, it's not racist too. Prophet of Allah, he don't tell a lie. Look, Allah Messenger, praise be, booze be upon him, ice cream, said Allah created Adam when he created him. I'm so glad that he said, he created Adam when he created him. Because imagine if Muhammad, like he have to make it clear. He created Adam when he created him. That's deep. This is what the cheese in the speech, you know. Created Adam when he created him. It's not enough to say when he created Adam. No, no, no. Allah created Adam when he created him, brother. And then he struck his right shoulder. The heck, and there emitted from it like what the heck? Our grandfather Adam, he have orgasm from his shoulder. Now I know why I don't like anyone to put his hand over my shoulder, including my dad. Don't put your hand down, dad. Why well, you are touching my private part? Don't you know that the shoulder of the man is his uh, hmm? uh, son? Trust me, I did not use my shoulder when I married your mom. <laughs> and you are talking about lies and continue. Let's continue. And when he hit the right shoulder, what happened? White of spring, as if they were ants. Look how racist this filthy Muhammad. White of spring, as if they were ants, came out. This is the orgasm of the right shoulder. And then he struck the left shoulder. Okay, it's not stop. No, left shoulder can have orgasm too. And there emitted from it black of spring. So Fakira, who called me from Senegal, is omitted from the left shoulder, according to Muhammad, not to me. You see the racist Muhammad? You see, if you look at the left shoulder and right shoulder, in Islam, uh, the word right mean the good ones. And the word left is the wrong one. That's why Muhammad forbid Muslim even to eat with the left hand. Because if you eat with the left hand, shaitan would eat with you. And the filthy Muhammad, he claimed that the white people are the one is born from the right shoulder because they are good. This is why they are good, because they are born from the white shoulder. And he claimed that black people are born from the left side of Adam. And they were like shirkul. Then he said to those who they are emitted from the right shoulder, you go to paradise, which means to the white. White, you go to paradise. And those, and I don't mind, and those who they are have, have been emitted from his left shoulder, they are to hell, and I don't mind. Can you believe it that there is those Muslims, they say to us, uh, I'm a Muslim from Africa. Islam is for everybody. Do you see it?
while in the Bible says, there's no free, there is no slave, there's no Greek, there is no Hebrew, for all is one in Jesus. No free, no slave. No Greek, no Hebrew. Everybody is one in Jesus. According to the Fatih Muhammad, even when he ordered him to obey Bilal, Bilal, he lived as a slave, and Muhammad never freed him. And Muhammad, he want to use those slaves for war. So if they die, he don't care. So he, Bilal is a very skilled in fighting, obviously, between those Arabs. So Bilal, he told them, Bilal is your leader for a group of the Arab, the white Arab. Those white Arab, they don't like it. A black man is our leader, and he is in the slave in the top of that. They are very racist, like Muhammad. But Muhammad explained to them how good he is. He said, you obey your leader, even if he is an Ethiopian African, and his head is a raisin head. He's making fun of the look of the African. This is how satanic this religion is. So this guy, when he talk about Christianity and lies, I find it very funny because Muhammad is the only one who approved lying, and we cannot find where Paul or any of the disciples or Jesus says you can lie. Nowhere. Actually, Jesus, he forbid us from taking oath, either yay, yay, or nay, nay. Anything else is from shaitan. You're a prophet, even he allow you to take a false oath in the Quran, saying that Allah will not take you accountable for your lies. Somebody saying to me, go check the golden age of Islam about Al-Jabra 2. My friend Al-Jabra 2 is made by somebody. He is a Sabi and he is not even a Muslim. He is not even a Christian. And you Muslims are a bunch of liars. Secondly, the golden age of Islam, is that a golden shower? What does this have to do with Islam? In the time what is called golden age of Islam, Muslims, they own tens of thousands of slaves in their houses. There's a city in Iraq. It's called Al-Basra. That city was full of black slaves. The golden age of Islam. You know, when somebody is famous, or let's say he did something, the Muslim, they hijack, and they say he is a Muslim. But the guy never was a Muslim. And even the scientists, who they are scientists, in their time, the Muslim killed them. And they considered him kuffar, like Al-Ghazali. Ibn Sina, he, you know, he spent a lot of time in jail. They chased him from place to place, from country to country. Ibn Khaldun. So they are proud about people, not in their time. In their time, those are kuffar. Philosophy is haram. Go check right now in internet. Philosophy is haram. Anyone is a philosopher, you should be killed. But now all the Muslims, they speak about Ibn Khaldun. But Ibn Khaldun, he said in his book, in the introduction, Arab are savage and they are willing, and he's talking about his people, the Muslims. They are willing to burn a right library for the sake, and take the roof down for the sake of cooking some food. The golden age of Islam, what about the golden age of Muhammad? Are you saying to me that Muhammad could not make a golden age, the Muslim after they, they made golden age, and golden age of Muslims, tens of thousands of slaves. In the time of Muhammad, Muslim, they start the business of pimping, pimp house. And notice with me, we have millions of Christian scientists. We don't say the golden age of Christianity. What does this have to do with the Christianity? They are bankrupt. They have nothing to be proud about. They are like somebody. He is bold. He is proud about somebody from his nation was having hair. Right? Hey, Salomon, Salomon, I don't have time for a stupid talk. Hey, you know, why you don't call me Salomon and tell me about how who is the one going to have the salvation of God? As long as you are a person who want to quote for us verses from the Bible, 
which we thank you for, by the way, because that will make us laugh at you, at your prophet. Isn't it your prophet? He says that he himself, he doesn't guarantee to go to heaven unless Allah, he warm him with his mercy. Do you dare to call me and to read for me Matthew 21? Or you are just a coward? You are just a coward, aren't you? I challenge you to call me and read it. And then everybody will laugh at you. Do you dare? You don't. Because you are a potato like your prophet. Or maybe, you know what, you are better than your prophet. At least you can read. You can read, right? A Muslim is trying to explain to us our Bible. So we get him busted with the first one. And now we get him busted with the second one. And then we get him with the third one and the fourth one. But he will never dare to answer what we just showed him about the screen, about his prophet insulting the black people, making fun of them, and claiming that they will go to hell. Potato like your prophet. You stupid donkey. Jesus was not talking to the Christian at that time, you idiot. Those aren't Christians, those are Jews. Aren't you even ashamed to say such a statement? Those are people who refuse Jesus, like you Muslims. They refuse to accept Jesus as Son of God, as their God. So those who refuse Jesus, they will not have the kingdom of God. And that is about you and the Jews who refused him. You stupid idiot. At that time, Jesus, he had just a few disciples. And those who they are arguing with him is not the disciples. I mean, do you see how hypocrite, stupid you are? If you just move just two or three verses more to the end of the chapter, you will see he's speaking to who? And everybody will laugh at you. You are a coward like your prophet. Jesus, he speak in parable to everybody and he's speaking to those who don't want to follow him. If you don't follow me, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you. Who was listening? Talking to who? the chief priest and the Pharisees. Those are Jews, you idiot. I mean, why Muslim, they make a mockery of their own religion and why they are in disability and why they love to lie. This is about the Christians will not go to heaven. No, no, we don't ignore. Actually, we are enjoying this. You see, we are here. We are here to do what? To spank them with no mercy. Right? You know, they are desperate to the point, even when a pimp, he convert to Islam, they say he is a fighting depression. I think that day he was fighting depression when he opened his web camera business. Did you see his last post? Last time I showed in the screen, he was posting a video of him drinking whiskey and smoking cigar. He fight depression, brother. Hey guys, I'm going to open a pimp website. I think that will fight a lot of depression. I mean, even the one they are proud about is a pimp. This is how bankrupt they are. Aren't you even ashamed? This guy literally a pimp and he himself, he called himself a pimp. And until now he drank and he used the F word and stop and you know, you know, they are proud he fight depression. The video was before he become a Muslim. Okay, hold on. Are you sure? I will go right now to Twitter. Let us say this video was before he become a Muslim, but he just posted a few days ago. <laughs> so if you are 
a Muslim before, not a Muslim before, when you did that. And then you post it today. So he is not insisting to drink no more. Brother, I am right now in his page. Let me look for it. Uh, this is stupid uh, Sky, you know, it keep asking me for password for uh, to log in in uh, let us find his post so we can love together. Uh, uh, that they look, this is his post. This is a new one. December 15. Brother. He have a whiskey in front of him and he is a smoking cigarette and he is going naked in camera. This is before he become a Muslim, okay? December 15. Today is what? What is today? <laughs> oh, he is in the night club, brother. You know, he's in the night club. He's, you know, he's a Muslim. He's a good Muslim, mashallah. Alhamdulillah. Brother, look at the bikini he is wearing. Brother, this is before he become a Muslim. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy yeah so you know I mean you, you Muslims are really desperate I, I feel sorry for you uh, yes login is a, is a what look at the Muslim look at the Muslim you know it he what is he sent out bitch who only says that what the walk what I'm not going to read the rest now <laughs> brother he's a great example brother he is a Muslim you know <laughs> and he is proud you know he go rent cars and he claim he owned them uh, and he's very humble by the way uh, look at this this is this is December 13 the guy is naked again look what the heck is that Action remains when we run out of excuse. So what is your excuse to be naked in the camera? <laughs> Isn't it chess is haram? He's playing chess. This is when? December 12th. Don't this guy know that the chess is haram? You want to show you the reference? A brother. Brother. Brother, yeah, look, look at this, this guy. He worship himself. So why you mention his name? We are laughing. I mean, what a scandal! What a stupid religion, bankrupt, and we laugh at your religion. You bring him unity, actually, when you mention such such a people. That they is talking about the beautiful girls. He's expert, you know. He's expert. Look who is look, look what he's posting. Those girls they say they like that they brother. Look. <laughs> Naked women. Look, no. <laughs> brother. This is before he become Muslim, brother. Not now. So what if it's uh, December fifteen or sixteen? So it doesn't matter. It's, uh, you know, this is before. He is a nightclub drinking now and he is recording, brother. Uh, look at this, man. That's good. That's a good one. Playing chess. Uh, brother. Naked in his robe. <laughs> it's halal. <laughs> oh, boy. He is teaching this girl how to play karaoke. I am wondering who is going to win. If I am the one playing with her, I will lose for sure. At least for a few minutes. Uh, oh, look. This is, he was, uh, we are getting closer to, oh, uh, he's playing cards. Oh, he's counting money. He want to show people he's rich now. All the money he have is from prostitution. 
Where is the post, the one he's saying he was before he became a Muslim? So we can laugh, man. Man, oh man. I mean, this guy is mentally ill. I think we are getting closer. Ah, I'm, I'm sure I'm hurting your eyes. Let me move down. Uh, let us see. A brother. He is teaching young people how to live, brother. Brother. Just smoke it and blow it. Brother. Mm. Wisdom. Philosopher. Uh, <laughs> What the heck is that? Wow. This is not good for publishing. Okay, I don't want to show you this. Uh, this is very dirty. Uh, let us see something else. I'm just enjoying this, by the way. Thank you for mentioning him in the name of this guy so we can laugh. Let us see. Brother. This is before he was a Muslim brother. But this is he just this is published in the same airplane. And he's smoking cigarette and he's he's, he's a drinking uh, uh, whiskey. November 30. Oh, the dog is haram. The dog is haram. He have a dog, brother. Let's go down. I mean, this guy obviously is making fun. You know, he like to be famous. You know, uh, yeah. Look, he's he's in the car wearing uh, wearing his underwear. He's he's literally in his underwear, and he is recording video. Naked. But anyway, you know, you were successful to change our topic, but we you know it just for a laugh. So when somebody he posts videos uh non-stop about him what he do, even if he, if I post a video of me one day I was drinking uh, uh gasoline and was 10 years ago, and I am speaking of myself highly doing that, you cannot say this is before Islam because still he is doing it and posting it now. If you don't look what he's posting, look at this. And look what he's saying, haram. Haram. <laughs> so he himself wearing panty, in the car or in the street is okay, but women wearing panties is haram. And the guy he own, he's a pimp. He own a you know a website making him millions from from prostitution. I mean, this stupid thing keep asking me to to uh, to log in. Uh, where is where is him drinking the wine? This is the video. I think we are getting closer. Yeah, this is his post. I don't remember the date he posted. So, so when a Muslim he says this is an old video, we we laugh because you know it doesn't matter even if it's an old, as long as he is posting it now. You know, look, you know, he's showing his watch. He is, he's mentally ill. Echo, they worship themselves. Look, I am looking for top G. Can anyone recommend one? Blocked. Guys, he blocked, he blocked this post, and he called it haram by reposting it. <laughs> oh, this is hilarious. <laughs> blocked, brother, blocked. This guy is blocking things, you know. He, it's blocked. It's against Islam, brother. Look. 
and he support Donald Trump too. I mean, can you believe it? This guy, he support Donald Trump. Uh, I think we are getting closer to the post where he posted the, himself drinking whiskey and here we go. Finally, you said that this is before he become a Muslim. Let us look at the date. This is the whiskey. This is Irish whiskey. I searched it on the internet. I'm not expert with the drink. This is an Irish whiskey, smoking cigar, proud about it, and he posed that when? November the 20th. So why you lie, you say to me, this is before Islam, before become a Muslim? As you see, this guy, nothing changed. He is just an, the same person. And obviously, he is using Islam just for his own propaganda. You Muslim, you support anyone who convert to Islam, even if he is a pimp. And as you see, the pimp is still a pimp. In the Middle East, we say, you cannot make the tail of a dog straight. Even if you put his tail in a frame for a thousand years, the second you take the frame off, the dog tail will back bend down. So when he posed this in November 20, and you lie and you say this is before he become a Muslim, he is saying, he did not say, I have decided to stop drinking. Look what he said. I have decided to fly to feel the state of California, walk into Twitter, and obviously he, he was not allowed to enter because if otherwise he will make tons of videos about this guy. He worship himself. Headquarter and tell Elon Musk he's a legend. He worship Elon Musk, brother. But he claimed that now this video is now. As you see, I have decided to fly to feel this state. So why he want to post a video which was old? If he is doing that, doesn't matter. Still, he is proud about it. He claim he is a flying. So both of you are a bunch of flyers and you are alcohol addict, like your prophet, who he claimed that alcohol is a sign from Allah. Do we have any Muhammadan? No, it's okay. I mean, because people download the video and they can use it for later to refute Muslims about things they say. Anything Muslims hear they say is going to be used against them. Islam is doomed. Islam is stupid. And we prove it every day. And as you see, I open my Skype and not even a single Muslim, only one Muslim girl from Senegal. Her name is Fakira. She called me. She changed her voice. Uh, there is a clip of Netate refusing to drink. Oh, well, this is his Twitter. He didn't have any such a thing. You are lying again. <laughs> but is, is he refusing to drink now because I said uh, I got him busted? So Muslims are saying, man, you, Christian Prince is making fun of you. My friend, I'm so proud of you having someone like Tate and his web camera business promoting Islam. May praise be to Allah. But obviously this guy, he don't care for Islam. He do everything not following Islam. As an example, still he have many girlfriends. Uh, he still own the business of the webcam. He did not close it. All the money he have, he did not return it. If he is a decent person who repent, he should, the first thing he do, he give his money, all the money he made from prostitution, because all the money he have is from prostitution, nothing else. You see, if you make interest from haram, it's haram anyway, and interest is haram. So if you say he invested the money in different place, still this is coming from the prostitution. So all the money he have is coming from the sweat of a vagina. If he have a little decency, and he repent, and he become a Muslim, which will make him more ugly, actually, he should give the money back to those women because he abused them and he used them. Those poor women, obviously coming from poor countries, they are desperate to make living. I'm not giving them excuse, but everyone have different story. So if he have little decency, he should give all the money he got. Trust me, he have all their account because he used to pay them. All what he need to do, transfer the money to every single woman he used and abused and he raped or been raped in his, his, through his website, if he did any. Give them the money if you are decent. But as you see in this guy, he have a lot of money and all the money is coming from one thing, prostitution. 
And I challenge you to say no. If I made money from something bad, I would be ashamed to, to be proud about it. And the first thing I do, if I repented really, is to wash myself from that money. Somebody saying, yeah, why he would do that? He is the same page with Muhammad. Exactly. Muhammad, all the money he made, all the Islamic State is was from raping, kidnapping. So at least he is better. He did not kidnap anybody. He's just a pimp. There's a video in Suku film of three Muslims uh, uh, speaking, discussing between them. And the title is, it's sound like it's okay to be a pimp in Islam. Go watch it. Yeah, my friend, he kickbox your he kickbox your your ass. Yeah, we are done with you. He is a kickbox champion. So let us say I play a game once and I won a game. What does that make of me? So what does that mean? Is that is that something I became doctor, etc.? It's just a loser. Kickboxing. He was a mule. Can you win a a, a fight with a mule? Nobody kick as the same as the mule. <laughs> What they are proud about, I have no idea. Uh, they are bankrupt, and bankrupt, bankrupt God. He cannot help them in anything. So when somebody convert to Islam, this is the only thing they can be proud about. And who is converting to Islam? He can tell. From their fruits you shall know them. The Lord said. Right? Yeah, you know, he is the same as. Uh... And not only that, that they actually is more honest than the rest of the Muslim, by the way. Why? Go watch his video. He said, the only true Muslims is ISIS. Every single Muslim who own a YouTube channel, they say ISIS are not Muslims. Every one of them. Mimi, Hijab, Susu, Dudu, Mimu, every of them. And Reta Tay. He liked Islam because they kill and they are violent and they slaughter. He liked to be one of them. And he said the truth. The only true Muslims is ISIS. And I agree with him 100%. I agree with him 100%. And now if we ask those Muslims who take talk about him, do you agree with him? They say no. So how come? This is the Islam he agree upon. He don't agree upon your Islam then. If Muslim, if ICE are not Muslims, and this is what you say, then he converted to ISIS because he said the only true Muslims is ISIS. That means he did not convert to your Islam. He converted to ISIS Islam. If, if ISIS is the only true Muslims, and the truth is the only Muslims are ISIS. The rest, they are hypocrite coward. They don't dare even to say what they believe. In the back door, they wish us death. They wish us to be killed. They wish America to be destroyed. They pray to France to be destroyed. They pray to everybody to be destroyed. But when they speak to you, they are potatoes, chicken. They don't dare to say anything like that. The only one who dare to say it is ISIS. They are just being honest. They are evil, yes, but they are honest with their evil. The rest, they are evil, but they practice taqiyya because they feel they are weak. That is the truth, my friend. ISIS means Islamic State. Actually, they use the word ISIS just to make it uh, so not to offend Muslims. But in fact, ISIS is Islamic State. And we are here to get you busted. So for us, actually, when somebody like this guy, he converted to Islam, uh, this is a very great opportunity for us to show people what kind of religion this religion is. If this religion is good, he will not be joining it. Only trash. Go to trash. Only trash. And until now, by the way,
the Muslims they could not explain to us as long they believe in destiny by the way as long you believe in destiny so this guy he did not do anything destiny Allah he made him convert to Islam according to you it's not his, his choice according to your stupid Muhammad Allah he made me Christian Prince and he made the Christian Prince go every day spank Allah it's not my choice this is what you believe so this is a very weird stupid religion they get angry from you in the same time they believe it was the will of Allah I mean, do you see how stupid this religion is? We can't quote religion. In one hand, they believe that anything anyone does is was a destiny. In the other hand, they get upset from you for doing what Allah decides for you to do. As an example, if I go right now and I do fornication, like five kilograms fornication, the Muslims, they claim that they are against fornication, correct? And they even say, we punish the one who do fornication. All right, wonderful. But in the same time, they believe that a man, he have to do fornication because it is a destiny from Allah. Have you ever heard of a stupid religion like this? So Allah, he force you to do fornication. And then Allah force other Muslims to punish you for what he forced you to do. This is the religion of the God of the Hummus. This religion is made by the book of Hummus, Prophet Hummus. Ah, I forgot the Muslim, they have a new name for him, Tos. So Allah, he made you do five kilograms because it says there, the fixed very portion, like maybe five kilograms for me, maybe six kilograms for you. We don't know. You know, we don't know, brother. Alhamdulillah. So Allah, he have a fixed portion of a Muslim man of fornication so why you Muslims going to punish a man he do fornication because Allah forced him to do so have you ever heard of a stupid religion like this there's a video of Mufti Mink speaking about the caliphate we play it many times you can watch it it's called uh, the destiny you know uh, a Muslim, he, he he was a thief. So they captured him, they brought him to the caliphate, Omar. And uh, the thief, he said to him, looked like he's very well versed, like uh, Mimi Hijab. <laughs> we do not know how to read this book. So uh, uh, he said to the caliphate, why you want to punish me for something was destined for me to do? Mufti Mink, he made a comment, says, and by the way, this is a good argument if you think about it. And then he continues, says, well, and the caliphate, he was smarter. He outsmarted this person. So he said to him, well, yeah, you are right. But it was destiny for me to punish you too. Do you see how stupid this religion? So it was destiny for the guy to be a thief and to steal. So when he come to the caliphate, he said, well, why you want to punish me if it was a destiny? The caliphate did not say you are wrong. He said, you are right. And even she, uh, Mufti Mink, he says, this is a very good argument if you think about it. Very good argument. Let me see if I can find the video. So you can search it and laugh. I'm not going to play it. Because those cowards, they always flag our videos. Uh, anyway, you can search for it. It's about, you know, they ask him about destiny. Uh, anyone remember what was the name of the video? That will make it easier for us to find it. I, I forgot the title, but you can search. <clears throat> if you watch a previous video of mine, I played his video, the same video. Uh, so already we have it recorded. Uh, let us see. Destiny, destiny, destiny. I mean, this guy, he have like an endless number of videos, so. I don't remember the title really, but it was about destiny. There is another English word for destiny. 
Anyone remember the name of the video? Okay. Let us see. I want to find it just to pause it for you. Mufti Mink Destiny. Uh, let me see if this is the video. Give me a second. <coughs> because I remember only the icon of the video, actually, not the title. But I know that the video speaks about destiny. And now we have a commercial. Let us see. Maybe this is not, I don't think this is the one. This different uh, background. I'm just trying to find it. Uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe one of you can uh, find it later and give me the title. So we can post it in the comments so people can watch it. Very funny video because exactly this is what he said, that it was a destiny for the guy to be a thief. So he was asking why I will be punished for something is destiny. And Mufti Minki agree that this is a very good argument. If you think about it, he said that, you know. Oh, uh, thank you. Yeah, I, now I remember. Thank you, uh, Saf uh, Safir al-Masih. A predestination for or fate okay I think it was a predestination maybe uh, let me search again give me a second it was something like that I think you know I don't know we will see uh, let us see this one here we go I found it Uh, guys, I found the video. The video name. Uh, if if Allah has written my destiny, why I am on this earth, Mufti Mink. Watch it and see how you will you will you will you know you will laugh. It is hilarious. Why I will be punished if I it was destiny for me. To be a thief and Mufti Mink. Uh, 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 the subtitle is not available, so we cannot play a subtitle. But anyway, you can watch it. So the guy, I believe this is the, the this is the exactly the the one uh, because it had the same background. But let me be sure. Uh, here we go. Yeah, this is that. This is exactly in the moment in the second thirty-two. If you watch this video, in the second thirty-two, he start talking about. Let me let me copy the link for you and post it. So he said that this is a thief. He need to be punished because he stole. When they brought him to the caliphate, you know, uh, he said to him, "Why you wanna punish me?" If it was a predestiny, and Mufti Minki agree, he said this is the good argument if you think about it. So he comes to Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu and he uses the same line. He says, "Oh Umar, oh Amir al Mu'minin, how can you punish me for having stolen when it was predestined? My deeds were already written by Allah, Subhanahu wa Taala." Now that's quite a good argument if you were to look at it. <laughs> this is a quite good argument if you would like to look at it very good argument actually I will make the link available in the 
in the info for people later who will watch uh, the video so you can go to the info and again you can just search for the title as we showed you in the screen so it's a pretty good argument if you think about it and then what he continues saying he said well because supposedly he's smart now the caliphate look how smart well it's a destiny for me too to punish you Omar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu was one ahead of this man. He See? says, well, let's punish this man because it was predestined that we were going to punish him as well. Allahu Akbar. Look how he solved the problem. So the guy is going to be punished for no sin because Allah, he predestined the person to commit sin. And now the guy who will punish the one who commits sin, but Allah forced him to commit sin, he is having no choice. Allah, he predestined for me to punish you. This is alone is enough to make anyone laugh at Islam to death. Maybe one of you guys, you don't want to load the video. Maybe you can cut this part and make it up, you know, uh, uh, by itself. Let people laugh. Like make a title, Destiny Explained by Mufti Mink versus the Christian Prince. Can you believe it? How stupid this religion is. So the guy is right. In Islam, we believe in predestiny. So if the Muslim, they lost the game, it was a predestiny. If they won the game, it's a predestiny, which means you play, you don't play, who care? You pray to Allah to, to win, you don't pray, it doesn't matter. It's a predestiny. You have sex, you fart, you shit, you do anything, it's a predestiny. You steal, you rape, it's a predestiny. How stupid this religion is, if we can quote a religion. So what the what the whole idea of believing in Allah mean? Because even believing in Allah is a predestiny. Even believing or disbelieving is a predestiny, which means it's not your effort, it's not you who choose. Allah, he destiny for you to become a Muslim. So what the point? What the point of hell and heaven? What the point of God? What the point of sending prophet? If everything is a destiny. And guys, right now I feel like I need to go to the bathroom. It was a destiny. And when I'm there, I'm going to ask, where are you, Allah? And then my fart will say, he is not exist. The sound you hear, it just breaking the wind. Your God does not exist. And those statements are proving it to us. This is not even this is not even a statement from a smart a human being. This is this is a stupid teaching. If this is what your religion is based on, so what is left for you? Predestiny. So today I went online, I laugh at Allah, Allah get busted, it's a predestiny. Muslim, they debate me, they lose a debate, it's a predestiny. Muslim, they debate me, they leave Islam, it's a predestiny. A Muslim, he called me, he, he leave Islam, he accepted Jesus, it's a predestiny. So what the point? What a stupid religion. How we can even call it a religion? Uh, Master Chief is the Muslim Shia guy who called me in the other day. And he is out of Islam. My friend, Mr. Shia, even though he did not announce it, but he was laughing at Islam horribly. You are, you did not leave Islam because of your choice, my friend. It was a destiny. Allah destiny for you to be Shia. This is number one. This is number two, to call Christian prince. This is number three, to laugh at Allah with the Christian prince. This is number four, Christian prince and you, you have a good time laughing at Muhammad. This is number seven, Did I skip five and six? No. Yeah, Muslims, they count like this, you know, like we, he will find number one and then he says number 10 because he learned mathematics from Muhammad. It's a destiny, my friend, destiny. So we say thank you, Allah, for your destiny that Muslims always lose in everywhere, even in football. And if your God cannot make you win in football by destiny, what he's good for? Making you lose? What a bunch of losers. I want to say thank you guys for being here. It's my destiny for now to finish my program 
at the 12 at the 3 sorry 324 uh, uh, p.m. and uh, I think Allah he made it 325 to finish so I still have one minute of destiny uh, before I go so I want to say thank you and now whatever I say by the way it's a destiny uh, may the Lord bless you all may Christ bless you all may all of you be saved and be with, with him the Lord of, of all, the King of all Kings our Lord the Messiah and get Muhammad busted every day and as you see everything I said it was a destiny so Muslim don't get upset it's a predestiny it's not my mouth saying that it's written in the book of Allah so don't be upset and if you are upset, don't forget to sit after that. Because even if you sit or stand up, it's a destiny. With the destiny of being a loser, I leave you Muslims. And with the destiny of being victorious, which is a choice we make, not a destiny, with Jesus, I leave you Christians. And may the Lord bless you all. And we pray with the Muslims to see the truth. And the truth will set them free. And stop being proud about a football. Your God himself now is our ball. And we put a goal every day. Thank you.